Well, good afternoon and welcome to the Dakota Leader once again. I'm your host, Brianna Sagdahl. I'm the editor of the Dakota Leader and I'm joined by Matthew Monfort. Matthew Monfort is the cameraman for the Dakota Leader and um, he's also an associate for us, with us, and capital, uh, an associate capital correspondent, excuse me. So Matthew has been and Pierre during this legislative session. He has been in the Capitol every single day and he is one of he is the main reason why individuals are able to watch video of each hearing uh, through this session. Matthew Monfort has doggedly um, been in every room he can he he can be a part of. Obviously, he's only one man, but he is working so hard to um, make sure to capture some of the most important bills that are going through the legislative session uh, this year. So, um, Mr. Monfort, thank you so much for joining me and having this discussion today. Um, I understand that you were threatened and intimidated the other day, and I'm hoping that you can share with our collective audience more about what happened um, following the hearing on HB 1235, which was the um, conscious exemption bill. And um, if you could uh, tell us tell us what happened following that hearing. Yeah, thanks for having me, Brianna. I appreciate it. Appreciate your work at the Dakota Leader as well and uh, being the only or one of the only true and uh, critical news services in our state. And so it's very important. Um, I, I have worked with you here at the Dakota Leader. And I also, as, as a Christian, I'm a Christian Baptist preacher. I run Jesus is King Mission. And so uh, I want to encourage everyone to be involved in the political world um, because uh, we need to bring light to the darkness. And so, uh, yeah, so I just kind of set the stage for what happened. Um, it was at the, I just need to mention this, that happened last um, week in the House Health Committee. Uh, I had asked as a cameraman to provide a audio device that would allow me to pick up better audio. And the LRC staffer was okay with that. And, uh, but Senator Tobin was not, and she didn't give a good reason. She actually gave a false reason. <laughs> and uh, so that continued into this week and the same LRC staffer, uh, after I had asked a different committee person, Chairman Jensen and um, this committee this week, um, said it was okay and then the lrc staffer said it wasn't okay so uh, then after that there were two security capital security people that were apparently called and uh, i got the sense that that was because of me so i was already being watched for that i'm not you know it seemed over the top but uh, then after the committee uh, hearing for uh, this would have been the House Health Human Services, and pardon me, I think I said House last time, it was the Senate Health Human Services last week, but for HB 1080, which was the child mutilation bill. So this time, after this had happened to um, this week, um, I was talking on the phone with uh, a senator and I see this same security officer standing you know, right, right, pretty close to me. And I say, you know, anyway, he said, we need to talk to you upstairs. So I was on the third floor, which is where the, basically the ground level for the Senate and the House. And so then I go upstairs to where the majority of the committee meetings are held, the hearings. And you're right, we we are the only ones really that seem to, to be videoing it because um, even though our state has lots of money that they could spend, they, they don't, they do not, put on video the most important uh, details which takes place in committees where all the debate, all the opponents and proponents, the grassroots, the civil, uh, the citizens come uh, to say, you know, give their take on uh, and present facts at the committee hearing. So that's so, it's so important that we get in there and film these because for years they, they've gone uh, in the darkness. And so um, anyway, so I get called upstairs and uh, Senator Lee Schoenbeck, uh, who uh, just accused us of being uh, un-American communists because we want to stand up for uh, proper elections. Uh, and uh, 
he's up there telling them that I'm trying to spy on the Senate caucus because I had left my video equipment in one of the rooms. It was, and so just to set, tell you how this works at the Capitol, uh, whether it's me or it's Kelland or KOTA or Dakota News Now, that's just accepted that these rooms are large, very large, you know, <laughs> they can be very large, but, um, you know, they're, they're accommodating and there's room to put your equipment and you might be waiting for the next committee uh, meeting uh, to start and there, there may be bills you want to uh, video throughout the day. So um, you're not going to carry your big uh, tripod and camera bags everywhere. And you don't want to leave it out in the lobby in the opening and, you know, you could be parked a block away. So, so right. accept, accepted. So I uh, shown my I left my video camera in there. It was turned off. It was laying against um, a, a wall or a cabinet in the in the opposite direction. I had two two tripods from different angles just to catch a profile view and then to catch a uh, close up view. And so I had another one that was a camera that was laying on the floor against a wall by my tripod you know, if I recall right, also facing in the wrong direction. So he's making this big deal that I had left my stuff in there that I was trying to spy on the Senate Republican caucus, which is where it's a closed door meeting where the Senate Republicans all get together to, to meet. And did I didn't even know. Did you what? even know that room was going to be used for a Senate caucus meeting or? No, absolutely not. I had I had no idea that that was the room that they were meeting in. That wasn't, you know, I'd had no plan to do that or anything like that. And and so um, I quickly explained and there was um, I, by the by the end, there was maybe seven like security officers, maybe more. There's quite a few people. I mean, uh, I'm pretty thick skinned, but I can imagine someone being embarrassed. You know, you, you're the eyes of all these security officers and, you know, <laughs> there you are with and they're bringing, you know, your camera equipment out and Lee Schoenbeck's accusing you of, of you know, committing a, a well, I can go on and to what ended up happening was was uh, they, uh, I explained to them, no, that wasn't my intention. And then they said, well, we took Kelloland stuff too. I think he used the term Kelloland or KOTA, one of them, but um, we took their stuff already too, their camera stuff and moved it out of there. Um, so nobody had asked me, you know, hey, could you keep, please come here, move your stuff or anything like that? Or can you find that, you know, camera guy here? And, and you know, I'm pretty sure everyone knows who I am <laughs> up there. Um, yes. And um, so, uh, but that wasn't the case. It just seemed really over the top. And then Schoenbeck said, um, or Senator Schoenbeck said, um, uh, if you, uh, if I catch you doing this again, you'll be an old man before you get this camera or you see this camera. <laughs> and, uh, and at that moment, the, uh, so there's, there was capital security and then there was at least one, I believe, highway patrolman in uniform. And so at that moment, he stepped in between Schoenbeck and I, and you told basically told him to cut it out and that that was uncalled for. And then Schoenbeck walked away. Uh, but, <laughs> so. I just can't help it. I mean, he's just so he's so unhinged. It's just like I just can't help but laugh. You know, I, I apologize. I, I just you know, I'm thinking about the hearing, uh, HB 1235, where you've got these lobbyists just like, can you imagine? And they, <laughs> and then you fast forward to Senator Schoenbeck, you know, screaming <laughs> and telling people that they're, feti you know, they have fetishes and that they're obsessed and they're communists and then, you know, yeah. threatening a member of the press and, and telling a member of the press essentially that he's going to use his power to lock them up for what, 20, 30 years? <laughs> I mean, you're young. Yeah. By all means, you know, like, yeah, yeah, no disrespectful, yeah. you know, d no disrespect, but you're a young man. So by the time you're, <laughs> he's essentially talking about locking you away for 30 years for leaving a camera in a room. I mean, it's just like, <laughs> I can't help a lot. I think it's you could commit like a violent crime and, and get less time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, anyways, I apologize. Please proceed. I'm, uh, I'm just, I'm just shocked yeah. and also horrified and um, a little tickled. I mean, I, it's like all these emotions all at once. Just thinking about this unhinged Senate leader. <laughs>
Yeah, and in the broader context, you know, with what we've recently encountered with you know, my own senator, I'm a, I'm from District 30, you know, and, and my senator is Senator Julie Freimuller. And, uh, you know, from from the evidence that I've seen and what I know, you know, it seems to be a, a, a molehill, if there was anything at all, turned into a mountain. And that's the same thing, just blowing this out of proportion. It seemed like uh, trying to trying to grasp at anything that they can and uh, work with it. And um, of course, this is particularly Schoenbeck, but there seems to be uh, a group of people that are um, associated with him and that don't, you know, when, when you're silent, when somebody's behavior is like this and you're silent about it, I, I mean, I testify. So I, I, I'm also there as a citizen. So I'm there to record and film and uh, to get eyes on this, but I also testify on bills. And I've been I've been shut down virtually and called out for talking on a bill and uh, on on subject on topic like I don't I go up there and I, after actually having read the bills I do my homework and then being accused of not being on topic when I'm laying the context for something which is often not given and uh, they don't like that and so they'll they'll uh, essentially try to mute you or censor you and say you're off topic but for example what was what happened um, yesterday was. Uh, Schoenbeck was going on, at least Senator Schoenbeck was going on and on, uh, you know, uh, using the term, the term fetish that we were obsessed, that we were, we were trying to basically obstruct the auditor and give them needless work when we we're just trying to clean up elections and then call us un-American and, and big government, you know, uh, communists. And, um, you know, if I would have said something like that, they would have, they would have, you know, turned me off. But to see on the Senate state affairs, which... Just so people know, the Senate State Affairs, if you want a good idea of who runs politics and pure and who the, the quote unquote goon squad is, look up the Senate State Affairs Committee. That's it. And the Senate Health and Human Services. I don't I don't think that they really care whether or not, you know, with the Senate one uh, SB 125 when we brought in literally the top team of pediatricians in like America. You know, we had Dr. J, uh, David Weissman who worked for J&J. &J. We had a, a, a pediatric neurosurgeon, uh, you know, et cetera. Um, and they they like it looked like, you know, Senator Davis had a prepared statement and gave these reasons, which really in, in the light of evidence, like when we're given evidence of people that are, you know, kids are, that are either dying or being injured for the rest of their lives. And they don't even want to you know work with us, you know, <laughs> at all to to try to pass something that would prevent that. And then the Senate State Affairs Committee, when you have, uh, you know, um, Mrs. Paloma and Rick Weibel and the team with SD canvassing uh, that have got I, I guess you could say a mountain of evidence and then they take like less than 30 seconds to decide uh you know Lee, uh senator lee schoenbeck will say all right it's time to um i move that we move this to the 41st day and no questions no you know the committee can ask questions they can have discussion and it literally just like that no 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 questions asked let's let's kill this bill and so that happened you know three times right in a row um and all these, just just so everyone knows, all these bills were Senator Julie Freimuller's sponsorship. All the, uh, yesterday, the uh, vaccine bill, all of the election bills, all of those. And I, I want to name those names. You know, you got, well, I'll see if I can pull up the list, but Senator David Wheeler is on the Senate State Affairs Committee. You've got uh, Senator Lee Schoenbeck, uh, Senator Crabtree. He's the chairman of that. You know, he's he's turned me down. <laughs> and so he, he could have called uh, Schoenbeck, uh, Lee Schoenbeck out of order. And and, and just so people know, I mean, I, I believe that public comment should be public comment. As long as you're not as long as you're not swearing or, you know, being sexually immoral or something like that. I think that, you know, even if I disagree with it, you should be al allowed to say whatever you want. And so technically, you know, she, I believe that he should have the ability to say that. But his standard and their standards for us versus themselves is in conflict. Um, but yeah, um, I just want to, so yeah, they've got Senator Tobin, uh, Senator Michael Roll on that committee as well, um, Senator Duhamel, and uh, I think uh, Senator Diedrich as well. Um, and I may be missing some. And then the Senate Health Committee, you've got Tobin, I'm just thinking off the top of my head here, Tobin, Davis, Roll, I mean, it's the same people, Diedrich, um, and... Uh, let me think of who else would be on the Senate Health Committee. Uh, uh, Senator Reed as well. Um, and uh, so these all these people here, they do not. Re and I'm saying this as um, 
as I serve different roles here, so I have more freedom here. So I, 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 I serve. Well, and I want to, I want to stop yeah, you ahead. that though, because right. um, I want to make sure that we differentiate here. Um, you know, the role that you serve for the Dakota leader is specifically cameraman, right? Yeah. So your views expressed are solely your own and are yeah. not reflective of anything at the Dakota leader. I just want to make sure that I put yeah. that out there because um, I truly believe as the editor that everyone who contributes to the Dakota leader should and and can have vastly different views. We don't agree on everything yeah. by any means, but you know that's that classical liberal sort of um, slant where I will you know, I will fight and die for your right to express your viewpoints and to have them. And I, I believe that everybody should. I also do not believe that those views belong in any article whatsoever. So, and I just want to make sure that I'm very clear about this because we have uh, opinion sections and, um, you know, op-eds or letter letters to the editor there is a very clear distinction at the Dakota leader between opinion and fact. So anything that is news or an article that is fact based, um, the only slant is that it, the essentially the cut the issues that we cover, right? And that's what slants us more towards that sort of classical liberal um, label, if you will, is because we do cover issues like vaccine mandates. We do cover issues like, uh, you know, the vaccine injured or parental rights or, you know, dot, 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 dot. Anyways, so I just want to make sure to clearly uh, differentiate that and um, get that out. Okay, so please continue. I apologize. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, that's fine. Yeah, I know. I understand that. Yeah, we need to um, let people know, uh, especially because media is such an important um service what's what's a, what's opinion and what's what's fact what do we have our hard, hard evidence for um so yeah i i just i just named some names and um you know in in my uh, my opinion uh they they don't they don't represent uh, you know they well just evidence based they uh most of these people are republicans um in fact they they all are and they do not they would not, if you were to go through line by line to the Republican Party platform uh, and the, the conservative values that are in that, they would not pass that test. Um, and so that's, um, anyway, I just want to mention that as well. So, Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you. I, I certainly appreciate that. You know, and I think it's interesting, the crossover between, you know, individuals that you've named on that committee. Um, I was just speaking with Jessica um, Polima about her experience yesterday being called a communist. You had brought that up. And, um, you know, I, I was CC'd on an email from a constituent of Senator Michael Roll. And she, uh, this individual, had asked her senator um, to please vote no on SB 40 and to please ensure the due process rights of Senator Julie Fry Mueller, to which he responded, I'm praying for you. Um, that's this, <laughs> he, I quote, sorry, and I quote, that's disappointing, comma, I'm praying for you. And so, you know, she responded and said, why, what? <laughs> like, that is such a, in, you know, it struck her. Um, as being a very unusual response to to have from a professional, right? Well, so I started looking into Senator Michael Roll because he's new. I've never heard of him before. I have no idea what he stands for or who backs him or who supports him. And I just found it was so fascinating that it was like a third large, you know, one of his largest campaign donors that for a thousand dollars happened to be the attorney for Julie Fry Mueller's accuser. So the individual who's representing, you know, the accuser of Julie Fry Mueller during, you know, that that process gave Senator Roll a uh, $1,000. Um, and it, I just think it's interesting because, right, we have all these connections. We have all these, these friends that are kind of working together, if you will, <laughs> to create their own sense of, of government. And it really does lock uh, the people out in, in in a sense because he had already had his mind made up 
and it didn't jive with the representation um, that his constituents wanted. And I think it really um, calls into question or it highlights the hypocrisy of what's happening, you know, at the top levels of the Republican Party, where now we have this concerted effort with like SB 40, for example, um, to open voting up to anybody who's a registered Republican, right? We're, so we're essentially removing that representative uh, or the Republic, representative Republic from Republicans. But, you know, anyways, you you understand what I, the, the hypocrisy is there is just, it's fascinating. So anyway, as a member of the press, you were threatened, intimidated. They went through your bags too, didn't they? Well, they brought, they brought my stuff out and uh, I had, there's a, there's a counter in one of their rooms. So I might've had like something charging or, or something like that, but yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't all together. So it, they could have, I mean, I, I don't, I'd have to look at if a security camera or something of, of that. But yeah, um, you know, when I go up there, I've got two bags. I've got my laptop bag. I've got my backpack and then I've got a, a cart and a, a little um, tray that I set on top of that to put my computer because I live stream. So I've got a, a camera and then I've got a computer and a little cart that it sits on. And, you know, it can be kept pretty neat and orderly and out of the way. You know, it wasn't a problem. I might have, to be honest. I might have even left that in, uh, you know, they have the House Republican caucus. I, I might have left it in that room before. They have a big room. Uh, I think it's 414, just the bigger room. And, you know, I didn't turn anything on or anything. Nobody even thought about it. And uh, I, like I said, I've seen camera equipment laying around there. Um, anyway, it seemed it seemed like it was a political political move. And um, I didn't have a lot of words for the the security people, I guess that they, you know, they're they're told certain things and they do their job. It's probably not every day that they have a communist spy in their um, <laughs> in, in their in in the building. So um, anyway, so yeah, and I talked with them the next day and um, a, a bit about it, and I told them I thought it was politically motivated, and so fascinating. Fascinating. Well, thank you so much for all of your due diligence and your time and your efforts. How far are you driving every day to get to the Capitol, by the way? Uh, yeah, thanks for asking. So uh, I'm not there every day. Um, I am I get there when I can. And um, I, I have, a you know, another full time job that I do. So, you know, it's it's um, doing this because I care. And um so yeah, it takes it takes me probably about four hours to get to the capital, um, and uh, I live in southwestern South Dakota. So um, uh, you know, any any help with that? You know, for you know, support the Dakota leader. You know, and for people listening to this, um, Brianna may give you information to do that. But I I know that uh, if you want to you know support uh, the work we're doing um, as an associate with the Dakota leader, you can go to JesusIsKingMission.com, and we've got a. A give send go account um every bit helps and really this is as brianna and i have talked if you want to save south dakota you've got to you've got to get the light shined on what's really going on and we have to be connected and the way you do that is through the media and really i don't see anybody other any other platform besides the dakota leader um really that's uh, gonna have the ability to do that so please you, you must do this it's not you know, we're not, we're not becoming, we're not, we're not millionaires. You know, if we had, if we were, if we were, you know, we would give it to this project, but we're not. So um, we, we need you uh, grassroots and people listening. If you want to save your state, it's, it's now or never. Thank you. I really appreciate that. And I really appreciate your work and your time and your effort. So um, yeah, I really do. I tell people all the time, the difference between the mainstream media and media sources like us is the power that people give to it. And I personally am so frustrated with people sitting around and waiting for bad people to do the right thing. It is time to support the right people doing the right thing who have done the right thing from day one. So anyways, um, that's my little opinionated rant on the matter. And um, yeah, you can uh, donate to the Dakota Leader uh, right on our website, www.dakotaleader.com. And we could certainly use those donations and advertising. And then um, where can people find you? I know you're on Rumble and you're on uh, Facebook. And can you tell us how, tell everyone how to find your stuff in particular? 
Yeah, thank you. Uh, so Jesus is King and then uh, Rumble, Facebook, Twitter. Twitter's great for those of you that, you know, haven't considered Twitter in the past or were upset with it. There is a lot of good going on, on on Twitter, a lot of good information. A lot of those doctors that were censored, they're now able to talk freely um, with Elon Ma- Musk and Matt Taibbi and uh, the Twitter files and, and that. And now you just saw the questioning, you know, the, the video of Nancy Mace questioning. Uh, I forget the gal's name. Got, uh, it starts with a G, I think. But uh, one of the Twitter Twitter people questioning her and Nancy. Oh, Mason, right. Right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. So there's there's good things going on. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I'm on pretty much all the social media platforms. Excellent. Thank you so much, um, Matthew. We really appreciate you. Uh, stick around. And I am excited to have you back on soon. Yeah, thank you, Brianna. Keep going. Thank you for all your work. And, uh, you know, I'm sure you set, you're set, you are. You're setting a good example for, for young ladies and, and people in general. So I'll keep going. Thank you.